So today we are checking out a couple of products from Dream Machines. If you've never heard of Dream Machines, they're a Polish company and their products are mainly sold here in Europe. But for example, Max Gaming has a lot of their products in stock. The ones we are looking at today are the Dream Machines Mousepad, aka Dream Machines Pad, and then the DM6 Holy Duo. Starting with the DM6, and this is a wireless ergonomic mouse. It's available for 50 euros on Max Gaming, so for a wireless product, it's quite cheap. And just looking at the build quality, it's actually very well built for this price point. There is no creaking, no rattle, but I can actuate the side buttons if I really use a lot of force, so there is some side flex. The mouse is pretty much completely covered in holes, but this might be a good thing because the coding feels quite cheap to me. But then again, the holes are quite large, and they do bother me while I grip the mouse. The weight for the DM6 Holy Duo is 80 grams, and that's definitely a good weight for a mouse in this size category, and for a mouse that's actually wireless. Moving on to the buttons, and the switches are Huano Blues. There is pretty much no pre or post servo, and there is only a minimal amount of wobble, but I can't even feel this in real use. The click feeling is tactile and snappy, but the switches are not easy to actuate. They are pretty hard for me to spam click, and spam clicking is actually pretty important for me in games. This added to the fact that there is quite a lot of click latency for some reason, it just makes the mouse not that good for gaming in terms of the click feeling. The side buttons feel a little bit weird for me, and there is an insane amount of post servo when I click the buttons from the edges. I do not even need to use that much force to actuate this. The scroll wheel then again is okay, the steps are not very defined, but scrolling is smooth, and it's easy to actuate the button. So overall the clicks are definitely not great, and the side buttons are pretty much the worst side buttons I've used in a long time. But anyway, here's a quick sound test. The sensor in the DM6 Holy Duo is the 3335 from PixArt. It's a decent wireless budget sensor, and it usually performs well enough. I measured the motion delay against the Orchi version 2 and the HDS wireless, and it does look like the DM6 Holy Duo does lose the both of those mice. And then of course it absolutely gets beaten by the Super Light and the Razer Viper Ultimate. I will still say that the sensor performance is good in my opinion, as I can't really feel the motion delay in-game. But the real issue is the click latency and the fact that this mouse is not up to par with the best mouse on the market and not even the medium tier mice on the market. Sadly I do not have an efficient way to measure click latency numbers, but if you want to see those, go check out Tech Power Up and Zogur reviews. Link is in the description. The mouse feet on the DM6 Holy Duo are black dyed PTFE, and the glide is basically decent. For example on the Dream Machines pad, the glide is actually quite good. But then again on the eSports Tiger Uba mousepad, which is quite rough, the glide is pretty much horrible. But on any kind of smooth surface, the glide is decent. Charging the mouse happens with USB-C, but I did not find any kind of specification about the battery life. But there is no RGB, and the sensor is power efficient, so the battery life should be good. Hey you, if you haven't liked the video, hit that like button, and if you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button as well. And finally for the shape of the DM6 Holy Duo, as I mentioned already, it's an ergonomic mouse. There are very gradual curves on the left and the right side when you look at the bottom of the mouse, and even the curves on the front of the mouse are quite gentle. To me this shape feels too safe, because there are pretty much no curves that I can comfortably grip when I claw the mouse. So I'm basically forced to palm grip the mouse, which I'm not that happy about. The hump is also very much towards the middle of the mouse, and when I try to claw it, there is pretty much no palm contact whatsoever. Also the holes on the sides do not feel great as they are quite large. For me personally, this shape is just not it, as it was very hard for me to perform in game, and it's actually even quite hard for me to just lift the mouse from the mouse pad. Of course, I could just use more time and get used to the shape, but because of the click latency issues, the coding and the holes, I just do not want to. For a mouse that's 50 euros it's actually okay, but because the G305 from Logitech exists, I do not see a reason for me to recommend this mouse to anybody. There are a few more weird things like the buttons on the bottom of the mouse, there is no indicators whatsoever of what happens of any of these buttons. It's pretty easy to tell that this one is a power switch, and then this one with indicators is a polling rate button, and then the last one that looks exactly like the polling rate button, and it even has these spots for the indicator as well, but there are no indicators, and basically there are only two options, this is only the RGB button, and it's on or off. I'm just sadly getting an unfinished OEM kind of vibe from this product. But that's it for the mouse, and let's move to the mouse pad, and that was actually a way more positive experience for me. 
It's called a Dream Machines pad and it's somewhat a standard cloth pad, but the best thing about this is that it's very, very cheap. At the moment it's available for 10 euros from Max Gaming and that's about $12. It comes in three sizes and I've got the one that's 850 times 400 mm. All of the pads are 3 mm thick and they are not that soft. The surface properties are actually quite a bit to my liking as it has quite a bit of dynamic friction and some static friction. The only thing is that I would like a little bit less static friction for those micro adjustments. The surface is also water resistant so it should be quite humidity proof and I can say for sure that sweat does not affect the glide at all. All in all the glide is very consistent and that's highly surprising to me considering how cheap this mouse pad actually is. Usually these budget pads wear out quite fast and they are not consistent but the Dream Machines pad does not seem to have any of these issues. I mean I can't say much about the durability after just using it for about two weeks but it's made of microfiber and it's uncoated so it should be highly durable. For the base it's pretty hard for me to test because I got the Excel version but it's a non-slip rubber base and these are usually very very good on my desk. The stitching on the pad is slightly raised but it does not bother me at all. There is no fraying whatsoever in the stitching in the two weeks that I've used this pad. At the end of the day I got pretty much nothing bad to say about the mouse pad as I did perform very very well with it in game. I would not say that this is an S tier mouse pad after trying out so many different pads but I have to say that this has to be the best value for money mouse pad that I've ever tried. Okay, scratch that, it definitely is an S tier mouse pad. I like the surface, it's water resistant, it's very consistent, it has good amount of stopping power and a decent amount of static friction. I mean, there is pretty much nothing to complain about the mouse pad. The only thing I would like to see is maybe make it a little bit thicker, uh, maybe about 4 millimeters, so it could be a little bit softer. But the surface is actually great because it does provide a good amount of stopping power and some static friction. And it's also very consistent, super super cheap and it has a good base. Well the stitching could also be improved but we are talking about 10 euros here. Then again the DM6 Holy Duo did not have many positives to it in my opinion. Although it's very cheap, it's still, it's still a little bit hard to consider recommending that to anybody. I myself would have much preferred to see their DM1 series go wireless as I have owned a DM1 mouse about 6 years ago or something. As far as I remember, it didn't have any major issues, the clicks were great and the shape was absolutely lovely. But that's pretty much it. Thank you Dream Machines for sending these samples out. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And if you enjoy my content, hit that subscribe button. And see you in the next one.